Thank you very much. Uh, good morning. Um, I'm Michael Mwaskakata. I'm from uh, the ILO, the Employment Services and Active Labor Market Policies uh, Group. Um, <coughs> I will. Uh, I'll, I'll make a short presentation, uh, basically on uh, the ILO perspective on older workers. The, if you look at the outline, <coughs> I'll look at. I'll give basically just uh, an overview of uh, the global situation of the labour supply. Um, and therefore how the issue of uh, aging population fits in. And, and that will come from uh, our recent study that the ILO undertook, the World Economic <coughs> and Social Outlook Report. Uh, it previously, previously it used to be called the Global Employment Trends, GET. Uh, I'm sure you, you have been, uh, uh, you know what uh, GET uh, before. And then, uh, I'll look at uh, what is the impact of the population aging on growth and uh, um, one or two socioeconomic factors. And then I'll zero in on uh, the IRO's normative approach. Uh, you know, ILO is a standards institution, state standards on, the, uh, on, on uh, uh, employment and, uh, and labor standards. And uh, that's what we call the normative approach. And then I'll look at uh, just examples of uh, some areas how ILO at, uh, looks at the issues of older workers. The role of PACE, uh, you see I've crossed there. Um, I won't go into that because I think yesterday it was comprehensive recovered, both by the European Parliament, Suzanne made a very comprehensive presentation, as well as Anigva made uh, a very uh, comprehensive presentation uh, on the European uh, experience. All right. So, population aging, as you, you may already know, has got an impact on the deceleration of labor supply. Labor supply is expected, according to the ILO, labor supply is expected to decline. Labor supply is the labor force participation rate. Uh, is expected to decline from around 65.8% in 1990 to 62% in 2030. This represents an, a decline of almost five percentage point every year. Um, and contrary to expectations, the largest slowdowns are expected to occur in Middle East and North, North Africa, as well as Latin America and the Caribbean. This does not mean that uh, in the other regions it will be increasing, it just means that the slowdown was already there but now the rapid slowdown is expected to take place uh, in the regions where the population was growing. Sub-Saharan Africa is always an exception. In this region, um, labor supply will continue to increase at a rapid, a rapid pace. Generally, older workers are increasing. Uh, If we look at the, those aged 55 plus in the lab, in, at the global level, the expansion incre was from 10.5% in 1990 to 14.3% in 2014. So in 2014, 14% 14 14 of the workers are 55 plus. And this increase is experienced in all regions, as Andres said. And uh, by 2030, it is expected that there will be 750 million older workers, that is workers that are above 55 years. And that will represent an 18, a share of 18%. Uh, so 18% of the labor force, rather of the workers, people who are already in employment, will be older workers. Um, and that will be an increase of 270 million between uh, 2014 and 2030. And as we know, population aging has a potential risk of uh, uh, reducing uh, the skills and increasing the shortages in the, uh, of skilled labor in the labor market. 
and that may increase also the demand for uh, migrant labor in key sectors, uh, such as the health and uh, uh, care sectors. If we look at, uh, at even higher level, the population above 65, those that are in some cases are considered to be outside the labor market, the population will increase from 8% in 2014 to nearly 14% by 2040. What this means, therefore, is that uh, the dependency rates in the economy will also increase. If we look at the trends in the dependency rates uh, from 1980 to 2050, the, the red, red bars are the youth dependency ratios. So it is the youth, the, those below 14. I think it's not youth there, it's those below the age of 14. Uh, below the age of 15, and then those below, above the age of 64 are the older workers, above the age of 55 are the older workers. So the dependence ratio of those above the age sorry, of 64 will increase from 10% to 25% by 2050. So it was 10% in 1980, by 2050 it will be, it's expected to rise to 25%. While the youth dependency ratio, or the, the young below the age of, uh, of 15, will of course stabilize around 32% uh, in, in, in 2050. What we see therefore is that uh, while total dependency ratio was going down until 2010, it will start increasing, it will be increasing because of the, uh, the aged workers who are now getting out of the, of the labor market and are depending on the few that is the prime, uh, uh, prime age between, 14, uh, between 15 and 49. That is also expected to decrease after 2030. During the crisis that just ended, older persons fared relatively well, uh, unlike to the past, the past crisis. Um, because their employment rates remained stable even in those countries that have been hit hard. Unlike previous downturns when older workers were often pushed into early retirement, this time it was a little bit different. Uh, enterprises decided to hold on to their experienced workers. However, as we saw yesterday, evidence is that those older workers that got out of the labor market, it is more difficult for them to re-enter the labor market. So while it is, they tend to keep, you know, to be kept in the labor market, it becomes very difficult when they get out of the labor market to re-enter the labor market. Uh-oh, I'm going the wrong way. Okay, so what is the ILOS uh, approach in terms of older workers? We have one instrument. Um, by the way, I don't know if you are familiar with the ILO instruments. ILO has got uh, conventions. Conventions are binding instruments, uh, which when ratified by a member state, the member state is supposed, is expected to uh, to implement and it is supervised by the IRO supervisory bodies. Uh, and then we have recommendations which are guidelines and these are not binding and are not subject to ratification. So they only guide uh, member states in the application. So um, we don't have a convention on, on the employment of older workers. They are incorporated in the uh, other conventions about employment. But uh, there is a recommendation that was adopted in 1980. You can see it was adopted quite a, quite a long ago. Uh, at that time already there was uh, an understanding that the population was going to start aging and, uh, and therefore they needed, needed to look at the um, inclusion of older workers uh, to avoid the discrimination in the labor market. So the recommendation promotes equality of opportunity and treatment for older workers, and we'll see what that entails a little bit later. And then it also promotes decent working conditions and protection 
uh, that is adapted to their needs and capabilities. I think these are the issues, some of the issues that, uh, uh, that we saw yesterday from the examples. And also uh, promotes access to retirement benefits. The convention in Article 9, I mean the recommendation in Article 9 states that all appropriate measures should be taken to ensure that guidance, this is now uh, with respect to public employment services, training and placement services provide older workers with the facilities, advice and assistance that they may need to enable them to take full advantage of equality of opportunity and treatment. In Article 5, which uh, elaborates on the equality of treatment in all areas, it states that uh, you know, there should be equality of treatment with regard to access to voc vocational guidance and placement services. Uh, and based on their personal skills, experience, and qualifications, uh, there should be equality of treatment with respect to access to employment of their choice, vocational training, promotion, and paid ed educational leave. <laughs> It also states that there should be employment security, remuneration for work of equal value. Um, social security measures and welfare benefits, conditions of work, including operational safety and health measures, access to housing, social services, health institutions, and in particular when this access is related to occupational activity or employment. This, these are stipulations are in Article 5. I'll talk a little bit about uh, the policy approaches. I'll just, these I'll just use as examples. There are many approaches, I mean examples that can be given. Uh, the first one is the Isle of Future of Work Initiative. I don't know how many of you already have heard of this. Um, it's, one of the seven initiatives that the Director General uh, introduced in his report to the uh, International Labour Conference in 2013. And the ILO Future of Work Initiative is looking at uh, how ILO and its partners can respond to the transformation of, of the world of work that uh, is now being seen because of the changes in the in the world of work and also how to maintain social justice in that, this transformation of the world of work. The report that I've, I've quoted there is a short report that was submitted uh, this year in 2015 in June, uh, but uh, the main report is the one that was submitted in 2013. You may wish to look at that uh, and it has issues to do with the uh, older workers and how you know, uh, public employment services uh, can respond. The ILO also has got uh, its sector department. This is a sectoral department that holds uh, meetings, what they call global dialogue forums, uh, in various sectors. In 2011, they held the, uh, a dialogue forum uh, on the needs of older workers in relation to changing work processes and the working environment in the retail commerce. We all know that in commerce, uh, mostly you have young workers but then the discussion was basically to strategize uh, with the changing you know, uh, demographics, how the retail industry can strategize in order to be able to you know, realign itself to take on uh, older workers as the demographics change. And we also have uh, recurrent discussions. Uh, these recurrent discussions are with respect to the declaration the, on fundamental principles and rights at work, uh, and uh, the discussions take place every year uh, on, on the four topics of, of, the, of the, uh, the declaration and one of them is employment and in this uh, current discussions we have uh, recurring discussions that refer also to issues of public employment services and uh, older workers with respect to employment. And that's the end. Thank you.